Kia ora whānau. how's it going? Um, just a quick short um, short call it all for today um, and it's uh, it's around again the mind um, and helping our minds and spirit and body uh, come into alignment with kingdom purposes. Uh, there's a lot of chatter in the world today um, around uh, wellness, um, mental resiliency, uh, uh, wholeness, um, connectiveness, um, um, how order. Uh, what's other words that we use? We talk about um, um, wholeness and and. Uh, our ability to be connected to each other, the relationships, the environment. Uh, we talk about mental um, wellness. We talk about mental resiliency. Uh, we talk about uh, haki roto, haki waho. Um, all these kōrero uh, about trying to bring healing to the inner mind. Um, if you spend time in reading scripture, uh, it'll become very apparent um, if you're open to what the scriptures are teaching, that the scriptures reveal a different side to where our healing comes from and where wellness comes from. Um, and uh, today I'm looking at um, Revelation uh, chapter 2 and 3. And I've been reading through the stories that uh, John had of the vision and the messages that um, the Lord had spoken to the, the seven churches. Um, I look at these uh, seven churches, even though they were real churches in their day and time, they're also parabolic sayings to the churches today and could also represent seasons and times that our church, church movements and people go through, people of faith go through cycles of things. Uh, one of the one of the great lessons about um, uh, for towards uh, mental wellness um, is this this idea um, at each section of the messages to the seven churches, um, the spirit says to him or to them who overcome. There's this repeated themes about overcoming. Overcoming is something that happens with perseverance. It's about stickability. It's about pressing in. It's keeping, keeping on the task, keeping on the mission, um, overcoming. And so in chapter 2, the, the, the angel that speaks to the church in Ephesus, um, it's, uh, it's reminding the church about its first love. You overcome by holding on to your first love. You build mental resiliency and mental strength by understanding in the sense of this particular passage as I'm interpreting it today, knowing and remaining in my first love. And here the church represents the body of Christ for us today uh, are we more concerned about the things of this world, uh, the things that I can get, the pleasures that can satisfy me? Are we more concerned about the system of this world? Um, Daniel had a prophecy um, or interpreted a prophecy from uh, King Nebuchadnezzar um, about this, this era that we're in, this rock will come and destroy this era. And this era is made up of iron and clay. Um, symbolic of Romanism uh, and symbolic of uh, well clay things that are made out of clay are very brittle and fragile and uh, like paper and like um, uh, cotton wool uh, it's there's no substance to it there's no depth there's no there's nothing that holds it together and as we know iron and clay they actually don't last together they, don't, they, they can't mould together, be strong. Um, and this, this, um, this image is that we've brought into um, the systems that this world portrays. Uh, we're meant to be self-confident. We're meant to be self-drivers. We're meant to be people that are, are, are given over to the pleasures of this world. 
um, we're meant to find our own purposes for our own path. But we weren't created like that. God had created us for a purpose. And that purpose was to glorify him. That purpose at the beginning of creation was to love and serve him. Remember your first love. Be an overcomer in pursuing your love with the Lord. That's how you build mental resiliency, as you remember who you were created from. We've lost connection to our first love. Some of us may have not even loved the Lord and don't even know what I'm talking about. I ask you to seek out for him. Find someone who does know him. Find someone who, who's able to talk to you about the scriptures, to be able to talk to you about what the Holy Spirit might be saying to you. Um, like Philip and the eunuch. Uh, the eunuch said, how will I know what this means? Meaning the scriptures that he was reading, the book of the scroll of Isaiah. How will I know what this means if, no one, if there's no one to tell me what it means? Seek after someone if you don't know what I'm talking about. Find out what the first love means. That thread, that God thread, is, he's woven it into all cultures and all people. A desire to seek after God, not our creation. Those who created. Um, Rangi and Papa, they cannot help me. They cannot help me overcome the tragedies and trauma that I may be suffering in my life. They can give me a moment in time satisfaction because they're beautiful and I love the creation and the resources they provide. But they cannot heal the heart. It's the creator of those things that can. It's the creator of the heavens of the earth, the father of all things, the father of Jesus Christ. Te kaihango nga mea katoa. Mana e tiaki. Mana e manaki a koe e mea ol whanau i tenei wā. Hold on to your first love. Don't let it go. The Lord is pursuing us and wanting us to know Him in a deeper way. And He will reward those who overcome. And it says here in verse uh, 7, And I'll give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. If you're an overcomer in pursuing the love of Jesus in your life, you will eat the, the, the tree of life. We've already eaten the tree of the good and evil, and we're the recipients of that, uh, that act. But today, if you pursue after him, Pursue the love of Christ in your life first. Then you'll eat the tree of life. The puna o te ora, The spring of water that's sustaining us all. Hi, no reira. He mihi tēnei ki a koutou. Nō reira tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora God bless.